Hey, good morning, Candy View. Welcome uh, to weekend service. We're so glad you guys are with us today. Uh, let's go ahead and worship however uh, you want to today. Uh, if you're watching this from home or with your family, feel free to stand and worship. What we're going to do today is we're just going to celebrate. It's the beginning of a new year. We did this last week, December 27th. Breathe in, breathe out. It's 2021. It's a whole new year. And what lies before us, we don't know. But we know who goes before us, and that is Jesus Christ. And so let's celebrate him today as we worship today as a church family. Yes, Lord, we know that you rule, you reign. You hold our world in your hands. And we join with voices from all over the world today, celebrating you, fixing our eyes on you. meeting in person or we're watching online. May our song bless your ear this morning, God. As it's the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain. And it's the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of Asian believers Filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every ton, every nation. A love song born of a grateful choir. It's all God's children sing glory, glory. Hallelujah, he It's all God's children sing glory, glory. Hallelujah. He reigns, and let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. The praises echo from the towers on cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. All the bells run from a thousand steeples. Oh, none rings truer than this, than this, than this. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns, He reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. All God's children sing and glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. It's all God's children sing and glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. All the powers of darkness tremble at what they've just heard. All the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. It's all God's students singing the love. Hallelujah, He reigns, He reigns. It's all God's children sing the love and glory. Hallelujah, He reigns, He reigns. It's all God's children sing the love and glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. It's all God's children sing the love and glory. Hallelujah.
I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you and I was breathing but not All my failures I try to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave glorious day now your mercy has saved my soul now your freedom is all that I know oh, the old may know Jesus when I met you glorious day it's Lord we sing today not because of our confidence in ourselves not because of our confidence in a new year we sing because of what you've done because of who you are and what you are capable of we've seen it in our lives we've seen it over and over again your faithfulness your sovereignty your goodness you took us from our graves and gave us a new story, a new purpose, a new hope. And let's remember that testimony as we sing. I needed a rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break out the way to your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen. Lord, we thank you that you pulled us from our graves, that you pulled us from death and into life. Lord, we worship you in this new year. Again, not because of what we are capable of, not because of uh, a new number at the end of a year, 
but we celebrate because of who you are and who you've proved yourself to be over and over and over again. We worship you. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, we're so glad that you came to uh, hang out with us online today. And uh, you're going to see a screen here, and we're going to go to it for a few seconds. If you're new, uh, please text the number uh, on the screen, and we'd love to get to know you. We hope that you're staying safe and healthy out there. Uh, as we start 2021. Uh, we have a new series that we're starting today, and with that, we've got a cool uh, addition to our weekly uh, programming. So, uh, as you know, we have our online services, 9 and 11. Uh, our 7 p.m. service on Wednesday nights has been discontinued. We wanted to carry that through Christmas Eve, and now we're focusing solely on 9 and 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. So please check us out online. Uh, get reminders on social media uh, when you see that a video has popped up from us. Uh, that way you don't miss a weekend service if you can't be with us online. Second, uh, in lieu of uh, our Wednesday night service, we still have midweek that comes out uh, right after service uh, on YouTube and then available on Facebook on, and Instagram on, uh, on Wednesday morning. And then on top of that, with this emoji series, we're really delving into being emotionally healthy people so that we can show people Jesus in the most practical ways. And so to be spiritually mature, we want to be emotionally healthy. You can't have one without the other. So a thing that we're doing on top of midweek, on top of our weekend service, Corey is going to be hosting Thursday Night Live for the next five weeks uh, from his home. And we're going to have a different specialist or Christian therapist with Corey uh, every single week of this series. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be live on Facebook on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and uh, we will make that available either uh, at the same time on YouTube uh, or it will be available on our YouTube page uh, after the event is done. We encourage you to watch it live or check it out sometime during the week when you're available, but that will be every Thursday night of the Emoji series live on Facebook. And so we want you to check that out. And finally, we have this book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And with Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, uh, we've had many of our staff that have gone to sabbaticals or have gone to counseling uh, really recommend this book. And it's really been a, uh, a life saver for them. And it's really going to be something that we reference here and there through this five-week series. So you want to make sure to check this out. Um, we have options for you to buy these uh, at the bookstore here in person. Or you can call online or call, find our number online. Uh, get connected to our office, and uh, we can save a copy for you. Uh, there's also, obviously, online options as well. But we're so thankful for a new year. What a great end of the year it was, celebrating Christmas and uh, our church family together with Seth finishing out our Heaven to Earth series. And uh, even though we're on to a new series, and we're on, even though we're on to a new year, uh, we still hold that prayer tightly in Grand Junction as in heaven, that as heaven breaks through, that it would change our city, it would change our church, it would change our families, it would change our hearts, that we would be showing people what heaven looks like and who Jesus truly is. And so we're so thankful for those of you that uh, give so generously week in and week out to further that mission and to make that prayer a reality. And so if you uh, do want to uh, give, there is a link up at the top of this post, as well as uh, other options as well that you'll see on the screen. We're so thankful for each of you and how you give and how you further the mission of Christ through your generosity and faithfulness. We're so glad you guys came to check this out. Enjoy week one of Emojis. <laughs> Hey guys, it is so good to be with you and share the Word of God with you. We're going to be looking at a 
variety of verses today, but I just wanted to say to you, this is the time. Like, this is the time of any season in our life. It's the time to live the way that God created us to live and who he created us to be for the missional purposes of being a sweet aroma in this world. I mean, right, the Bible says that we're to be the sweet aroma of Christ. And oftentimes I know I don't feel very sweet. I stink sometimes. But the the world is challenged as we know, and we get to be the opportunity to bring in the sweet scent in a stinky world. Now, how do we do that? One of the ways we do that is by being spiritually mature. It's my job, it's your job to help each other be spiritually mature. I need a lot of help, you guys know that. But one of the things that leads to not being spiritually mature is being emotionally unhealthy or mental health challenges. Emotions are a significant part of our spiritual health. In other words, I've seen people who are very spiritual. They're like prophetic and then they go home and they're a complete jerk to their spouse. Like, what's up with that? You cannot be spiritually mature without being emotionally healthy. So for the next five weeks, we're gonna be looking at emojis. This is so good, this is fun. And uh, this week is on authenticity. We'll get to that in a moment. But emojis is interesting because look at all these emojis. It's like, this is a graphic art form of expressing our emotion. Like if you're feeling, ooh, I love you, you know, or whatever, or uh, uh, I don't know what that one is. This is uh, Tim Brown after the Broncos. No, scratch that, Cowboys lose. Uh, hey, there's Kirk with a cowboy hat. So anyways, all of these emojis and this whole kind of world of, of using this graphic art to express our feelings is because we're not good at it. We're we're terrible <laughs> at being vulnerable and expressing our emotions. And dudes, we should be the first ones to say we probably have some room to grow there. So this is not going to be a namby-pamby, touchy-feely like series that, that, that if you're not into that stuff, you're gonna be like, ah, gag me, right? What this is gonna be is we're gonna roll up our sleeves and get to work. Because as people who are followers of Jesus, when we understand how to be authentic and vulnerable and people of courage, and to stop some autopilot patterns that are very destructive in our life, we will just start smelling so good for the glory of God. Like, I know you want to feel more authentic, more comfortable in your own skin. I know that you have more to offer to this world, and you know it too. Well, what's stopping us? What's getting in the way? You know, the other day I was, uh, Chris, Christmas morning. <laughs> And I was sitting in my lazy boy, kicked my feet up, just enjoying the moment. It was just, it was just peaceful. And um, we had gotten the kids some presents. We have three kids. And then we had one of our kids invited a, another friend who from college who uh, uh, didn't have a place to go for Christmas. And so he came over. Uh, he's from Venezuela. So hi, Andre. And um, it's really great to have him. Anyway, uh, my kids are opening their presents and I'm like, as a dad, I want them to be blessed. I want them to be excited, you know, maybe for your kids or your grandkids or your spouse or maybe your parents or your brothers or sisters, you feel that way. But then you guys, I had overwhelming feeling came, came upon me that independent of all these material gifts, what I wanted so badly for my kids who have gone through challenges, our family like yours. We've had emotional challenges and mental health challenges. We've had lots of physical challenges and relational you know, things. And uh, man, I mean, this journey is hard, right? This life journey, there's so many things that can just get in the way and cause hurt and pain and sadness, you know? And so I'm watching the open presence and overwhelming in my heart, in my father's heart. The heart of a father. You see, I'm created in the image of God. I'm a father, and I know that feeling, and God the Father looks at us, and I'm looking at my kids, and I'm saying, this is what I want for them. This is what I want for them for Christmas. I just want them to be fully alive. I want them to be fully loved. I want them to fully love others. I want them to be full of freedom. I want them to be so comfortable in their own skin that they know what a gift they are to this planet. I just want that for them. I want shame to be gone in the name of Jesus. I want fear to be gone. I just want them to, to thrive in this life. That's what a dad wants. And I'll just be honest with you. 
Canyon View, the Grand Valley, and anybody who's watching. I so want that for you and for me. And I know God wants that for us. I know it because this Bible says so. He says in John 10, 10, that the enemy, the thief comes to kill and steal and destroy. But I came, this is Jesus talking, that they may have life and have it abundantly. This word abundantly, it means overabundant. It means more than you can imagine. You see, the thief, the enemy, he's trying to steal our identity. He's trying to steal our purpose. He's trying to steal our kids. And he's trying to kill them. Now, what's the difference between kill and destroy? What the enemy's trying to do is to lie to our people that we love in this world to kill their dreams, aspirations, ideas, and purposes, and that's not enough. The enemy then wants to destroy it. So there's carnage generation after generation after generation, but we're gonna stop it. This series right now is saying right now, we're gonna stop what the enemy's trying to do. He will not kill, he will not steal, and he will not destroy. It stops with us. You might be a person that you've had anxiety for generations in your family like ours, or you might have alcohol addictions or incredible debt. What if through he- learning in the next few weeks about what God has for us through healthy emotional living, we could stop some of these generational things? And I think that's what will happen. I really do. You see, Jesus came that we would have this life. So let's look, let's look into that a little bit. What does it look like? that this would be the time we become fully alive and fully authentic. There's a really, really great quote. It comes from this uh, group. It says, um, from Michael and Robin Thompson, and it says this, We believe that men and women are oriented and coming fully alive who know who they are, where they are, and the good that God is up to in their lives. These men and women, these will be men and women who change the world. I'm gonna go back. We believe that men and women oriented are coming fully alive who know who they are. So that's their identity. Who know where they are. We are living in the already not yet of the kingdom of God. And two, that God is up to something good in their lives. Healing, discipleship, training, and transforming us to be people of the kingdom. It's so good. You know, in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, um, Paul is writing to a group of people. And as I prayed about this next year for us and for the staff and my family, um, this is the verse that came to mind. And so for me, this is really important. And I hope it blesses you. He says that this is what we're called to do this year. To put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed. Now, the idea of renewed is a continual renewing in the spirit of your mind. And this is fascinating because we, we would often hear to be renewed in the spirit or to be renewed in the mind. But look at this, you guys. To be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Well, what the heck is the spirit of your mind? We don't hear a lot about that. So I'm going to teach on that here in a little bit. Now, as we continue in this verse, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. This is going to be a key verse for us as we continue to kind of look through this. See, the old self is um, the self that has been uh, corrupted in a way by ways of this world, including shame. So what does it look like to be a person that lives with authenticity? Authenticity means two things, that you live with courage and you live with vulnerability. We'll unpack that more later, including on Thursday night, when we have Thursday Night Live at seven o'clock, and we'll invite a therapist in town as a Christian therapist to talk more about these kind of things. But What does it look like to be authentic and live courageous and vulnerable? You see, 
the old self wants to hide. Uh, let me be really vulnerable right now. In Chicago, where I just came from, I was pastoring a church there with, with friends. Uh, There's a senior pastor named Scott, was a great guy, great leadership there as far as the vision for the kingdom. My role was to be kind of in charge of about 90 staff and uh, eight uh, locations. And um, I went from Canyon City, one church, to that. And it got a little overwhelming. I was consumed by it. I thought about it often. I uh, was not present for my family at times. I was very focused to be successful. I just felt I was a little bit, I don't know, off in some way. And so I went to um, a therapist and a Christian therapist and I told the therapist, yeah, I'm going to be sending people to you. So I want to have one meeting with you just to, just to make sure that you're okay. You know, um, which really wasn't true. The truth was I knew something was off. I didn't know what was going on emotionally in me. I was, uh, having often like, um, anxiety and, um, And so while I'm there and we're chatting, the therapist, her name is Amy, she's very, very good. And she says, you know, most men who are middle-aged have a syndrome. And she said the syndrome or the concern is called imposter syndrome. And it means that men and women of all ages, but it hits in in middle age for a lot of people, is that they they feel like there's a fear of being found out. So it's afraid of being found out. It's an inability to internalize their accomplishments and persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. Now, it's not one particular sin or any sort of main thing that they're lying about, anything like that. It's a general idea that I'm going to be found out that I am not good enough, that I need to fake it till I make it, that if I let people know how afraid I really am, I'm not going to be loved. And so I got to uh, try to be a perfectionist or I have to be uber successful to make up for this feeling. In some way, all of humanity has it. You see, even in the Garden of Eden, uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, they hid. They did not want to be found out. And so this is what we want to get rid of. And the truth is the vulnerability of being potentially incompetent or being afraid or whatever is actually part of beauty. Let me give you an example. I was in college, 18 years old, and I was in my buddy's car and it was winter in in Wisconsin and we're sitting on the side of the road. It was just me inside of the car. So I'm just sitting in the car, waiting for the car to warm up. It was a crappy car. It was some old crappy car. And he had just washed it though. So the windows were super clean. And I'm sitting in the car, just waiting for it to warm up. And I noticed Julia, this really good looking girl that I've been talking to and started dating off in the distance. And she's with her friends and she sees me. And it really made me feel good because with her friends, she goes, I could tell I didn't see the thing. She goes, ah, it's Corey. And she kind of goes, ah, you know, and she starts running to me. And I'm just sitting in the car watching this and I'm feeling pretty good about myself because uh, she, she likes me. And uh, <laughs> this is what happened. I'm sitting there and she's getting closer and closer. and She's very excited. And um, she comes really close, excited, big smile on her face. And now I know what she's going to do. She's going to give me a kiss. So she's coming in fast and hard to give me a kiss. But, you know, I mentioned there's a problem. (laughs) The, the, The window's up, but she doesn't know the window's up. So she comes in and this is what I see. Boom! And she hits her front two teeth right on the window. And she's a little bit staggering around. And I'm just sitting here enjoying this whole thing happening. And I had to make a choice right there. Is this someone that I want to be with? (laughs) Is this someone that was trying to do something right and it just got jacked up? And in that moment, her vulnerability, when she tried to do something, it didn't go how she expected, total mistake. She looks like a total dork and she's actually (laughs) dazed and confused. And my heart for her just just was just so for her. I fell in love with her again in that moment. Why? 
Not because she did something great. It's because she was real and authentic. And she screwed up. And she was vulnerable. You see, what made her beautiful was her vulnerability. But yet, what we try to do is hide our vulnerabilities to be accepted. It's jacked up. It's the opposite. You see, we can know this even from Jesus himself. So I'm going to show you real quick the most vulnerable moment in the history of the world. And I'm not like being all dramatic for dramatic sake. It's true. The most vulnerable moment in the history of the world that we have recorded in any form of history, continent, nation, any century, this is, this is it. It was actually captured in Luke 22, 42. And this is a picture of it. This was a picture that was actually at my grandma's house. And it's Jesus in the garden, and he's praying to God before he goes to the cross for us. This is God, the Son, about to go save humanity. The whole reason he was here is to restore the kingdom of God, that we would be saved through him, his death and resurrection on the cross. It's been foretold. He knows it. This is where he's going. It's what he's got to do. This is the purpose, right? But there's this moment, and hardly anybody talks about it because it's controversial. It's, we don't want to even think about it. But check this verse out. Jesus says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now, different scholars have gone all over the place. There's a bit of a mystery to what Jesus might be specifically talking about here. But independent of what it might specifically mean, this is vulnerability from Jesus our King. And this is a king I can respect and follow that he says to us, you know, Father, I love Corey, but I'm not sure I'm willing to go through the pain and the agony for him. Is there another way? Wow. That's vulnerability by, by God. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And I surrender. You see, Jesus himself, fully man, fully God, fully alive, is being vulnerable and just saying, I'm not sure. Is there a different way? He never questioned that he would do it. There's never questioned his love to save us. He never questioned his ability and strength. But it seems like he was wondering about the way. And God answered his prayer and strengthened him because of his vulnerability. An angel came and gave him strength. He rose and he went forward and he defeated death and we have life in him. But you see, he allowed himself to be vulnerable and honest. And that's where God the Father met him. It's crazy. Now the question is, why do we resist being vulnerable? Well, because we're afraid of rejection, right? And what do we do instead of being vulnerable? Really, really quick, I think there's five things. One, I think we numb it. Brene Brown says, we are the most in-debt, obese, addicted, medicated, and fake on social media generation that's ever lived in the history of the world. It's because we numb and we don't want to be vulnerable. We hide. We say we've been isolated in this pandemic but some of us have been hiding. We perfect. If everything is in order, if we control it all, we don't need to be vulnerable. The other thing we do is we declare what's right and wrong versus having conversation. We just say, this is how it's got to be. Even though you have a lot of insecurities about that, we see that with politics and with religion and theology. And of course, we pretend. And so Canyon View... What I'm asking is that we go into this next season of people being open to the idea of being authentic, courageous, and really vulnerable. Now, let me give you the details real quick before we get the, like, how do we do it? Because in church, honestly, guys, we say this stuff a lot. We get inspired, but like, how the heck do you really do it? So let me show you. I showed this to you a couple weeks ago, right? Hang with me now. 
And this is this idea of um, the stimulus and response, real simple, right? That there's a stimulus that happens and then there's a response that occurs. And in this is where we want the kingdom of God to show up. Now, here's what's fascinating. Here's the detail. When he says in Ephesians, put on, take away, don't go lean into your old stuff, but renew your mind. Here's what happens when a stimulus, let me give you an example. The other day, I'm right here at church and a gentleman comes up to me and he says this, hey pastor, a few months ago you gave a sermon. I didn't like it. I was very mad at you. And I went on YouTube and I slammed you up and down. So that's the stimulus. So my now response is this, two things have to happen. The first thing before I respond is my brain kicks in and I actually think. So this is, this is what um, researchers have told us neurologically that when a stimulus happens, we think and we create a meaning first. First comes a meaning. That meaning can be true or false, depending on your background, your history, your dysfunction or whatever. Right? And from that meaning now, thinking about what that is, that creates then what we all know is a feeling. So if I were to think, oh no, this guy's gonna hit me, I'm gonna feel scared, and then my result is gonna be to pull away or not talk to him or say, peace out, bro, or whatever, right? And so we all do this. This is where we need the kingdom of God. This is where the emotions happen. Neither good nor bad, emotions are emotions. Now what we do with it, so what if your thinking is wrong? What if you've been trained over your whole life to respond in a certain way, even as an autopilot, and it's not healthy. So in this case, this gentleman says, you made me mad, I slammed you up and down. So my first thought was, well, uh oh, here we go again. But I've been learning to pause. I've been learning to just like, hold on. Don't formulate an opinion or a thought or a meaning that might not be true. See, the key to this right now for most of us is just to pause, just wait. And so then he says, this just happened, uh, this happened uh, last weekend. He said, Corey, I don't want to say to you that I'm sorry. And he, he, he confessed and said, I was really wrong. He then affirmed and said, you are a man of love. He said, he's with me. He says he's excited that, that uh, our family moved here. And I'm like shocked. I thought I was about ready to get peppered again. And so my thinking changed and the feeling then went to, oh man, I forgive you. And I understand why you would have done that. And man, we're in this together. And it was really beautiful, you guys. I, I won't say the name of that person, but I respect that man. I honor him for his humility and his bravery. And my response then was different than it would have been with the incorrect meaning. So every day you're getting a stimulus, you're creating meaning, it's creating a feeling, and then you're responding. People of God, this is where we become the sweet aroma of Christ. That in this moment, being authentic, okay, hang on now, here's where we get, is not just going with it because well, that's how I feel. So I'm just being my authentic self because that's, that's, that's what's coming out. No, 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 no. See, we're supposed to put on a new self, Ephesians said. We're supposed to be renewed. So our authentic self in here is what is the character of God? What is the Jesus in me? And how would that person, Jesus, respond in this situation? You guys, that's authenticity is when something happens, we respond with the character of God, with the love of Jesus to a world that desperately needs it. That is authentic Christian living. And it takes time and it takes work. It takes practice. It takes failure. It takes success. <laughs> you know, all of these things. The truth is we are a mess being formed by God. We're just a mess. We're considered righteous in his eyes, but we're in process. And as a mess, what we're doing, we're saying, Jesus, renew us, help us put on that new self, our new identity. And then we invite people that are messed up 
into the journey. One person said, we're messed up people inviting messed up people into a beautiful journey of becoming whole and authentic and good for the glory of God and the well-being of people. So, Holy Spirit, let this come. Let us be people of courage and vulnerability. Let us be authentic. Let us risk. Let us be a community where we have so much grace for people trying on being vulnerable and authentic. I tell you what, church, I look forward to getting to know you like you, the real you, the deep you in Christ. It's going to be such a good ride. So as we close, I just wanted to give you a final encouragement. I know this is a lot and some of it got maybe psychological or something, but please know this is a journey we're going on now the next five weeks. It's going to be really good. But this is uh, this is what you need to know. It breaks my heart that what I'm about to say, some of you are going to have a really hard time believing. You are awesome. You were created in your mother's womb. And you were knit together like nobody else on the planet. You are unique. You are beautiful. You have been gifted in such a precise way that God knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly when you would be born. He knew your life and it's all right here before you to live now a life that's authentic and vulnerable and good and true, no matter how much hardship you've been through. You are creative. You are inspiring. You are a freaking masterpiece. And that's what the Bible says. You are a work of art. You've been created by the potter and you are beautiful. You are humble. You are full of joy. Oh my gosh the plans that the Lord has for you are good and they're for your welfare. You just need to let it sink in today by the grace of God. You're fantastic. And you're a gift to the planet for the glory of God and the well-being of people. We'll see you. lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am Has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. And while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of. Uh
I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken, but I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. Who I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Lord, we trust in your word. It says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you've adopted us into your family. That you call us sons and daughters. I encourage you watching online to close your eyes. As we start a new year, we trust in the only one that's worth our trust look to the only one that's worthy of looking to. And we say this year, 2021, I put my hope, I put my trust, I put my future, I put my family in your care. You are the God of the universe that came down to earth and took our sin and took our shame. You're big enough for my sin. You're more than enough for my life. So this year, we fully lean into the truth that we are sons and daughters of God. God bless you guys as you go from here. Don't forget about Thursday Night Live with Corey. Come in this Thursday at 7 p.m. And we'll see you next week.